Welcome to this lecture on rolling loads and inference lines. This pertains to the fourth module of the course Structure Analysis 1 described by KTU for the fourth semester civil engineering. Civil engineering. So in this lecture, so we will be discussing rolling loads and inference lines. An introduction to rolling loads and inference lines will be given. And you will be taught how to find the reaction of a simply supported beam using influence line diagram. So then we will cross check the result uh, using the conventional method as well. So first uh, let us have an introduction to the rolling load. So rolling load, so coming to rolling load, rolling load is nothing but uh, the moving load. So moving load, if you come if you, uh, for an example we can tell uh, a vehicle, a heavy vehicle moving over a bridge is an example for moving load. So now the load of the vehicle will be transferred through its beam to the deck slab of a bridge. Now the deck slab is supported on beam. So beam runs longitud in longitudinal direction along the length of the bridge. So we have a case of rolling load coming over beam. So now so we will have to analyze the beam for this moving load. So for analyzing the moving load, for analyzing the beam, so we need to calculate the shear force as well as bending moment. So for calculating the shear force and bending moment, we know the conventional method. We are always already aware of the conventional method. But once there is a moving load, so we are not familiar with that. So for that, influence line will become handy. So now coming to what is influence line. So influence line is nothing but a graph. So it is a graph of a function. So the function may be shear force or bending moment. So it is a graph of uh, graph of a function when a unit load, when a unit load, so this uh, this is very important. Unit load is very important. When a unit load moves from one end to the other end of a beam, when a unit load moves from one end to the other end of a beam. So this is a this is a graph. From this graph, we could calculate the shear force as well as bending moment. So now uh, as uh, as an initiative, we will be starting with the reaction at the support. So why the reaction at support is relevant? So we know, we know the maximum shear force at any section of a beam is the reaction. The reaction at the support is the maximum shear force at any cross section of a beam. So reactions are very important. So now we'll, uh, we will learn how to draw the influence line diagram for the reaction. And from the influence line diagram, we uh, calculate the reaction, support reaction. So considering the beam AB, so here we have the uh, beam AB. So here we have the beam AB. So to draw the influence line diagram, we are moving a unit load from one end of the beam to the other end of the beam. Okay, now we, uh, so now we have to calculate. So first, first we are going to draw the influence line diagram for reaction at A. So this is the reaction at A, and that is RA. So we are going to uh, draw the influence and diagram for reaction at A. So for that, what we do is we place the unit load at A. So here we can see the unit load, one kilonewton unit load is placed at point A. So now we are going to calculate the reaction at A. So reaction at, to calculate the reaction at A, we need to take moments about B of all the forces and equate to zero. So here it is done. So R A, the length of the beam is L. So R A into L, taking moment at B, so taking clockwise moments as positive and anti-clockwise moments as negative. So R A into L minus 1 into L, so the unit load is at A, 1 into L is equal to 0. So the moment is equated to 0. So from this we can calculate R A. So R A is nothing but L by L that is equal to 1. So this ordinate we are plotting here. So the influence line ordinate that is 1 that we have plotted here. So now we are moving this unit load from end A to end B. So suppose imagine that the load is now at X. So now the load one kilonewton is at X. So now here it is uh, it is at X. So now again we will have to calculate the bending moment. Again we will have to do the same procedure that is taking the moment of all the poses about B. So here is taken R A into L. So moment about B R A into L minus one that is unit load one into L minus X. So the load is now at X. So total length of the beam is L. So the remaining portion is nothing but L minus X. 
So R into L minus one into L minus X. So that is equated to zero. So from that R is equal to L minus X by L. So that ordinate we are plotting here. This ordinate of the influence and diagram is nothing but L minus X divided by L. So that ordinate is plotted. So now again we are moving the unit load from that point X to the end B. So imagine that it reaches the uh, point B. So now what will be the reaction at A when it reaches point B? So here it can be again we are taking moment about B. So R A into so R A into L. So R A into L minus. So here when the load is at B, when you take the distance, the distance is zero. So ultimately we get R A is equal to zero. So here the ordinate is zero. So if we plot all these ordinates, if you join, if you draw a graph joining all these ordinates, so that will be the influence line diagram for reaction at A. So now we have drawn the influence line uh, diagram for reaction at A. So now we will have to draw the influence line diagram for reaction at B. So for uh, drawing the influence line, react, uh, influence line diagram for reaction at B, again we will have to do the same procedure that is move the load, unit load, one kilonewton from end A to the end B of the B. So first uh, imagine that the load is at the first point that is A. So now taking moment, so here, so RA, so uh, taking moment, so here, at x is equal to L, now x is equal to L, so RA into L minus 1 into 0 is equal to 0. Okay, so, so that's for the uh, previous case, for coming to B, so initially the load is at, uh, load is at A, so now taking moment about A, now taking moment about A, minus RB, anticlockwise is, since anticlockwise is taken as negative, so minus RB into L plus 1 into 0, since load is at the point 1, plus 1 into 0, so that is equal to 0, so from that we get the reaction at B is equal to 0, ordinate of the influence and diagram is equal to 0. So now we move the unit load from A to the point X, to the point X, so now again taking moment about A, now taking moment about A, so RB into minus RB into L, minus RB into L plus 1 into X, plus 1 into X is equal to 0, minus RB into L plus 1 into X is equal to 0. So from that RB is equal to X by L, from that RB is equal to X by L. So now again we move the unit load from X to the point B, X to the point B, again taking moment about A, so RB minus RB into L minus RB into L plus 1 into L plus 1 into L is equal to 0. So equating that to 0, RB is equal to 1, L by L that is equal to 1. So we, we can draw the influence line diagram for, for B as well. So now the influence line diagram for A and B are drawn. So that is, so that is complete. So now we will come to a uh, problem. Now we will come to a problem, a beam problem. So here this is a simply supported beam. So we have a 10 kilonewton load. So we have a 10 kilonewton load acting at point 2 from the left support. So now we will have to calculate the support reaction using influence line diagram. So for calculating the influence, uh, uh, calculate the reaction, what we need to do is, we have to draw the influence line diagram for reaction at A as well as reaction at B. So that we already know how to draw the influence line uh, diagram for reaction at A and reaction at B. So this is the influence line di uh, diagram for reaction at A. So the ordinate at A, it is 1. So here we have an intermediate, the intermediate points can be calculated if it is x. The intermediate points, points are taken as, if it is taken as x, then L minus x by L, so that we already, uh, already know. And for the, uh, for the reaction at B, the intermediate ordinate can be obtained by uh, x by, by calculating x by L. So now here we need to calculate the support reaction for uh, 10 kilonewton load acting at 2 meter from the left support. So here R is equal to, so here, so this ordinate, so this is at x, imagine the 2 is equal, x is equal to 2, here x is equal to 2, L minus x by x, L, that is 5 minus 2 by 5, so that is equal to 3 by 5. So here to calculate reaction, what we, what we need to know is, we have to know only the ordinate. So multiplying this ordinate by the load will give the reaction at A, multiplying the ordinate with the corresponding load will give the reaction at A. So here we got the reaction as 6 kilonewton. And for calculating the reaction at B, 
again we will have to draw the influence length diagram for reaction at B. So this is the influence length diagram for reaction at B. So now we have to calculate the ordinate under the load. The ordinate under the load for reaction at B is X by L. So that is 2 by 5. That is what we have calculated. And to find the reaction at B, so we need to, what we need to do is multiply this ordinate by the load above it. So here 2 by 5 into 10 that is equal to 4 kilonewtons. So this affects the result using conventional method. So in the conventional method, so we are doing the same thing that is we are taking the moment about B. So RA, so now here RA into 5, RA into 5 minus 10 into 3, RA, RA into 5 minus 10 into 3 is equal to 0. So from that RA is equal to 6 kilonewtons. So that is RA. So this is matching with the result obtained from the influence and diagram. So now to calculate RB, so since it is anti-clockwise direction, we are taking it as negative. So RB into 5, RB into 5, so this is clockwise, plus 10 into 2, plus 10 into 2 is equal to 0, getting to 0. So from this RB is equal to 4, 4 kilonewtons. So this result is also validated. So we can use the, so here, so uh, here the two methods, the difference between the two methods is that, so here we need, we need to draw the influence line diagram. So, but when there, since there is only a single concentrated load, we feel that conventional method may be uh, quite easier. But when there are a number of loads, number of V loads, then this, uh, this method will become much more easier. So today we have, uh, uh, today we have learned how to draw the influence line diagram for reaction at support and find the reaction at support. In the next class, we will learn how to uh, how to find the shear force shear force at any section using influence line diagram. Thank you.